you know, it was immensely successful. Over 12 years, Tim, Bill and Graham wrote and starred in a staggering nine series, 70 episodes, five specials, won awards and had a dedicated audience of over 12 million viewers a week. They're obviously three clever blokes, but they weren't afraid to just be silly. But the boys didn't just stop at conquering the small screen. Come on, everybody, it's Gibbon time! The Goodies Media Machine sold over 900,000 records and produced numerous best-selling books and comics. Like, sort of superheroes, weren't they? Just with no special powers, apart from just a lively imagination. Goodies. Goodies. The Goodies was a unique comedy show, not quite a sitcom or a sketch show. They were just three manic, silly chaps who, for a laugh, ran an agency that could do anything, anytime, anywhere. And it was the madcap characters of Bill, Tim and Graham that brought the show to life. Basically, if you lined the three of us up in a parade and said, what do these three represent, you know, in those days, you'd say, well, that's the posh one, that's the boffin, and that's the scruffy little oik. You capitalist embarrassment! Common oik! Posh! Common! Posh! Common! Posh! Common! Posh! Common. We've denied or Tim has, certainly, and Graham to a certain extent, that the characters are based on ourselves. Ding gang, gooly, 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 wash, wash, ding gang. I have to say, I disliked my character. I, 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 the only thing that he has in common with me is he's a coward. And the rest of him he represents almost everything I, I don't. Why stop it, Prime Minister? How about Empress of Europe, of America, of the world? Here we are, try this on. I just love the way that Tim was this um, slightly um, establishment figure, a fate sort of character, but at the, st at the same time he was quite innocent and vulnerable and put upon. Where are my shiny shoes? I want to die with my shiny shoes on! I'm a teapot! I'm a teapot! I'm a teapot! <laughs> <laughs> what is it with Tim in drag? Really? Did anyone else ever look at Tim when he was dressed in drag and kind of think, oh. <laughs> Just me? Don't yeah. touch me! Oh, playing hard to get, I like it. <laughs> well, our period of comedy to start with was all anti-establishment, and so if you're going to do a show, you need somebody who is the establishment. And so I was the queen, the government, whatever it was. So I always had to represent that side. Are we going to stand by and watch England's green and pleasant land Bill was the sort of right-on lefty and the one who probably represented our actual um, political leanings. Think, where's it all going to end? It's going to end in a grand people's uprising, Chucky. <laughs> to offset the sort of wisdom of his political leanings, he was given this character which was uh, extremely sort of grumpy and bumptious and grotty and rude and aggressive. <laughs> He was like sort of the cheeky one. He was the, the naughty chimp. Power to the people! And strangely, he was probably the sex symbol. Him? But he's fat and hairy and horrible. How does that work? Here yeah, is an important announcement. You never quite knew where you were with Graham. That was great about his character. It has been put about by backsliding revisionary paper hyenas that the goodies pirate post office is closing down. This is a lie! sideburns very curious and these glasses and I thought he must have been very clever a planner sort of like um, the intellectual mind behind these schemes 10 million little electronic miracles you can become this terrible Nazi creature or you can be a great scientist you little Frankenstein oh thank you <laughs> When the goodies opened up shop in November 1970, it was an instant hit that was only going to get bigger. 
One of the key factors in this rise to fame was the scheduling decision to show the first run on BBC Two, the alternative arts channel, and repeat it again on primetime BBC One, which was home to traditional but extremely popular family fair of puppets, <laughs> lovable idiots, I beg your pardon, block your ears, and old time pensioners. Your name will also go on the list. What is it? Don't tell him, Pike. <laughs> and it was into this mix that the surrealist comedy of the goodies came crashing through. The beanstalk is apparently growing all over the country at a quite a time. <laughs> they used to love playing around with the, the concept of the, the nightly news bulletin. And um, there's a great one in, in Beanstalk. <laughs> The beanstalk was last seen heading for the south coast. The goodies were the first people to really understand that news readers were celebrities in themselves, but they used them as comedy characters. And I think that's quite interesting, because up to that point, people still vaguely believed that news readers were somehow journalists and not celebrities. Everybody's doing it. I'm talking, of course, about the bounce, the dance that's become so infectious that really nobody can resist it. Once you start bouncing, it's impossible to stop. It's already... A Barrett was so dance. good, just staying completely deadpan and just doing it as it should be. And so the sad fact seems to be that the country is bouncing to the brink of disaster. The public love seeing... Um, celebrity guests um, out, of, out of context and in other people's shows. And uh, there's a surprising amount of it in the goodies. String, the product which in a few amazing weeks has not only revolutionised <laughs> but rejuvenated British industry. It has a thousand uses as a substitute for <laughs> conventional electric wiring. There's a brilliant sense of the old BBC there, of, of people from different disciplines and serious disciplines wanting to join in the fun. And I, I, as a kid, again, you get that. You get it sort of transmitted to you, like, osmotically, that, that the whole of TV centre was in on the joke. And can you tell me the family of birds divided into Screech, Tawny and Barn? Oh! Oh, is correct. People jump on me and say, what was it like being in the goodies? And I, I say, I wasn't in it. <laughs> Yes, you were, yes, you were. We saw, saw the episode with you in it, and I said, that wasn't me. <laughs> yes, it was, yes, it was. And they point blank, uh, you know, tell me I'm lying. Two little boys had two little toys. Close the box! I would have liked to have played the part of myself, actually, in the role, and I wish they'd approached me. I would have done it like that. Here comes the hottest new baby on view. And there are the two who are really responsible for the first Rolf Harris ever bred in captivity. Hello. I recognise that face. At last, little Rolf Harris meets his audience. And yes, he is the spitting image of his parents. I guess they probably thought it was also anti-Rolf Harris that I wouldn't have even looked at it. <laughs> little did they know. I would have loved to have done it. This one. <laughs> a walking, talking little Rolf Dolly. Tiny kangaroo. Mama, tiny kangaroo down. Right. It was an awful moment when we were rehearsing in the same building and we got into the lift and we'd just been bad mouthing Rolf Harris. And he got into the lift and said, I'd just like to say I'm enjoying the show. And neither, if we'd been on our own, we'd have said, Oh, we like yours too, but we couldn't go through the other two. So it went silently down. And at the bottom he said, well, just thought I'd mention it. I feel guilty about that to this day. Sorry, Rolf. <laughs> Who's that puff? It's Tony. <laughs> but there was one iconic 70s celeb and Radio 1 DJ... Right, Tony! <laughs> ..who copped it goodie style for five long years. I was a running gag in, in the show, which, we, we, you know, for any performer, anybody on radio television, is a delight. Far out and embarrassing. And now, for your opinions, Tony Blackburn. <laughs> it then became a little bit awkward because we had uh, records out and we needed to be on hey, Tony Blackburn's playlist. <laughs> we thought we can either start being nice about him, which would be totally mealy-mouthed and um, unacceptable, um, or we could just go on sending him up, but invite him onto the show and send him up. Tony finally received his cameo in 1975 in an episode called Scatty Safari. 
And of course, he did exactly the right thing of enjoying the joke and coming along and, and allowing himself.